Good day and welcome to another edition of your program, Infrastructure Weekly, where we x-ray the infrastructure development agenda of the Muhammadu Buhari administration. I am Abosadi Omowi. We'll be back after this time out. Stay with us. Coming together with opportunity. Uh, this is what... Infrastructure is the backbone of development, which explains the Buhari government's effort at bridging the facility gap. Infrastructure Weekly is a television package designed to bring you latest information on hundreds of development projects going on in various sectors all over the nation. There is no state in Nigeria today where you will not see our contractors busy at work. Power generation, rural electrification, road rehabilitations, national housing scheme, construction of roads and rail lines across the country, you name it. We are now able to produce 7,000 megawatt of power. That is no longer debatable. Infrastructure Weekly is Nigerians working together for a better Nigeria. So be better informed to take better informed decisions. Watch Infrastructure Weekly, showing on Channel Television, Thursdays 2.30 p.m., NTA Network, Wednesdays 5 p.m., and Co TV News, Fridays at 8 p.m. Infrastructure Weekly, making development known. Welcome back. The federal government says it will continue to put more emphasis on infrastructure development as a means of empowering Nigerians to engage in productive activities. The Minister of Information, Cultural and Tourism, Lai Mohammed, disclosed this while inspecting the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, while also promising that the road will be completed by the end of the year. For years, those plying the Lagos Ibadan Expressway have been going through hard times due to the dilapidated state of the road, leading to loss of man hour. But the Muhammad Buhari's administration is keeping to its promise of ensuring that those plying this route do so with ease. With a project of such significance going on, and to ensure that Nigerians are aware, the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, is on site with members of the pen pushing profession for an on the spot inspection to see things for himself. Briefing the minister and his team, Noah Nakisis, project engineer of the Reynolds Construction Company and contractor handling the Shigamu Ibadan Access, says the work has reached 58.27% completion. Nakisis explains that RCC is currently working to expand and reinforce the road in addition to building concrete drainages and repair the failed bridges. He further says the RCC is also doing maintenance of the existing carriageway to ensure a free flow of traffic, giving assurance that before the end of the year, the company will complete the asphalt laying phase of the entire 84-kilometer sector. In our quarry, we are producing around 7,000 tons per day. Behind me is the Marini, it's the asphalt plant. The production for uh, the asphalt plant is... 210 tons per hour. Um, also in the Marini, we have a PMB plant that we had uh, uh, additions to the bitumen to make the asphalt stronger and to make the durability of the of the road to last uh, longer. At the Shagamo Interchange, Wolfgang Losesa, division manager of Julius Beja and contractor handling Section One from Lagos to Shagamo Interchange says 17 kilometers of the three-lane 43 kilometers road has been completed. Losesa assures that in the next couple of days massive construction work will commence, further disclosing that a huge interchange is being constructed to contain the huge vehicular traffic around the redeemed Christian Church of God's Redemption Camp. For the first time in Nigeria, according to the contractor, a special mix of asphalt is being used to prevent the road from caving in due to the movement of heavy-duty vehicles and to extend the lifespan of the road to 20 years. The divisional manager says the section one of the road is 53% completed. When, when, when we started this project together also with, the, with the other company, uh, uh, RCC, we jointly uh, developed a new design for this road. So you have an additional 15 cm tough asphalt layer be, 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 below the normal asphalt layers. Plus you have the double width or thickness of base course material, which is normally in Nigeria you will, you will build with 15 centimeters of base course under the asphalt layers. Here we have 40 centimeters. So, and also the asphalt admixtures have been 
modified. The recent extension of the scope of work Minister of Information and Culture explains is in anticipation of the huge traffic coming out of Lagos to the Shagamu interchange. Expressing happiness at the base of work, the minister calls on the contractors to deliver on the project as scheduled. With this in place, travel time and loss of man hour will further be reduced when the road is finally completed, creating a positive impact on the Nigerian economy. 70% the traffic coming to Lagos goes is on the Lagos Shagamu exchange. By the time it gets to Shagamu, the hundred people, hundred vehicles leaving Lagos, about 70 would either go to the south south or elsewhere. And that explains why uh, Lagos to Shagamu exchange is three lane on each side, while Shagamu to Ibadan is two lanes on each side. About 4,000 jobs have been created as a result of the highway construction in the Section 2, which is the Shagamu Ibadan Expressway. And no doubt when the project is completed, there will be ease of travel and more jobs will be created. Still on the road sector, the federal government says it will ensure that contractors working on road projects throughout the country have access to a steady stream of funding to ensure projects do not suffer from neglect as was the case in the past. Minister of Power, Works and Housing Babatane Fashola disclosed this while inspecting federal road project in Jigawa State. Let's take a listen. Minister of Power, Works and Housing Babatunde Fashola assures Nigerians of the federal government's commitment to completing the long-abandoned Adeja Nguru Road by August this year. The minister, while inspecting the 33 km road project, says the federal government will not hesitate in payment due to the contractor handling the road. We are undertaking an inspection tour of the Kirikasama Nguru Road. Now, that comes from Hadeja, which is part of uh, uh, Jigawa State, and links us from Chris Kasama, also part of uh, Jigawa State, with Unguru, which falls into Yube State. What that tells you immediately, again, is consistent with what we have set out to do. Our work is federal highways connecting all the states of Nigeria together. So this is the road that connects Yubi and uh, Jigawa State. This administration has deemed it necessary to pay contractors so that the Adeja Nguru Road project in Jigawa State, which was awarded in 2010, but could not be completed due to lack of funding, will immediately be completed. The state government also expresses commitment and dedication towards ensuring the project and other ones across its state are completed. The place where my ministry offers that kind of developmental support, of course, is in public works by way of roads that help to connect Jigawa to neighboring states like Kanu uh, and so on. Uh, so the Kanu Maiduguri Highway is one of those projects that we are undertaking. There is also the Hadija uh, Unguru Highway. Hadija Unguru is also a project that has been there for a very long time. And because of your dedication and focus, the work is going in real speed. And um, I just learned from you that it will be commissioned somewhere this year or early next year. So we say thank you again. The last administration in the 2015 budget only allocated 18 billion to all the roads in the country and only 9 billion was paid. But this administration, according to the minister, has committed more than 250 billion naira to roads infrastructure. When people ask you, what does change mean? Tell them that I said, change means doing more with less. Currently, there are about 300 roads and strategic maintenance of bridges across the country. 
If you were just joining us, the program is Infrastructure Weekly, where we take an in-depth look at the infrastructure development agenda of the Buhari administration. Join us after this break for a look into the housing sector, exemplified by the National Housing Program. Stay with us. Thanks for staying tuned. For inquiries, comments and feedback, you can get in touch with us on the social media handles showing on your screen. The National Housing Program meant to bridge the housing deficit in the nation is now on in 33 states of the Federation and is also, according to the Ministry of Power, Works and Housing, a source of employment for young Nigerians skilled in the building sector. The Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatani Fashola, who was speaking during his inspection tour of the site in Dote Jigawa State, said the ministry will work to ensure that only locals of areas where such projects are situated get employment at site to boost the local economy. Let's take a listen. This is a pilot phase of the national housing project pilot in the sense that we want to test whether people will accept what we have designed so these designs are the product of the consultations we have made with people the advice we have received from architects from different parts of the country we want to test whether also people can afford it so we have built them in different uh, capacity. So we've gone to the one bedroom unit, we've come to the two bedroom units, and we have ended up in the three bedroom units. What we have now is 38 blocks. So this one contains 76 units. And this is largely what is repeated across all the states. Uh, the modification to this are in some of the southern states where you have blocks of flats. Uh, we have tried to improve the quality because we build it for people who are lower in income. Doesn't mean that it has to be badly built. This is the quality of life. When President Buhari said in the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan that he will invest in the Nigerian people, this is part of what he means. That it will give you a quality of life that lifts you up. So because it's for low-income people, doesn't mean it has to be badly built. And you will see me every time I'm inspecting, I'm asking my team, we must change the standard. For inquiries, comments and feedback, you can get in touch with us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash infrastructure weekly and on Twitter at infra underscore weekly. Join us after this break for a look at the power sector. Together for and this is what Infrastructure is the backbone of development, which explains the Buhari government's effort at bridging the facility gap. Infrastructure Weekly is a television package designed to bring you latest information on hundreds of development projects going on in various sectors all over the nation. There is no state in Nigeria today where you will not see our contractors busy at work. Power generation, rural electrification, road rehabilitations, national housing scheme, construction of roads and rail lines across the country, you name it. We are now able to produce 7,000 megawatts of power. That is no longer debatable. 
Infrastructure Weekly is Nigerians working together for a better Nigeria. So be better informed to take better informed decisions. Watch Infrastructure Weekly, showing on Channel Television, Thursdays 2.30 p.m., NTA Network, Wednesdays 5 p.m., and Core TV News, Fridays at 8 p.m. Infrastructure Weekly, making development known. Many thanks for staying tuned. The federal government has reiterated its determination to ensure that the issue of problem of metering consumers of electricity becomes a thing of the past in Nigeria. Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatani Fashola, disclosed this while speaking at the 27th Power Sector Stakeholders Meeting in Yola. Let's take a listen. Stakeholders from the power sector across the country are all gathered in this hall to discuss the successes challenges and the way forward of the sector. The Minister of Power, Works and Housing, who addressed the gathering, said the Ministry has already issued a regulatory framework to license meter assets with a view to ensuring that all consumers have access to meters. Fashola said the federal government is working to deliver an incremental, stable and sustainable power to all Nigerians. This story of improved power supply is consistent with what we wanted to achieve from the beginning incremental power. We know that there is still more work to do. We know that there are people we have not reached, but we remain mindful of those people we have not reached. And I believe I speak your minds if I say that we remain committed to getting to those people, whether on the grid or off the grid. The minister, however, challenged past sector workers to be ready to meet up with the challenges of effective and efficient service delivery to all consumers. But as we make progress, we will also be challenged to increase our commitment to improve service. It is one thing to build the assets, it is one thing to connect the consumers, it is another thing, even more challenging now, to keep them connected and to keep them satisfied. The chairman of the Transmission Company of Nigeria, Usman Gore, said they have complete 80% of 32 kVA power lines that have been destroyed by Boko Haram insurgency in the Northeast as a result of the intervention of the Federal Ministry of Power, Works and Housing. We are expanding our network in the, in the Northeast. For example, we are putting 150 MVA substation, that is a 330 kV substation uh, at uh, Bauchi. We are putting one in Jalingo, we are putting one in Mayabelwa, and we are also expanding the capacity of Yola, we are expanding the capacity of uh, Gombe. The minister will also address the issue of estimated billing and assured consumers that the ministry will continue to work assiduously to ensure that such trend is brought to an end. The program is still Infrastructure Weekly, a program that takes an in-depth look at the efforts of the Buhari administration in bridging the nation's infrastructure deficit. The federal government has challenged distribution companies to do more by expanding their networks and building capacity to distribute the available generation and transmission capacity of the other legs of the power sector value chain. Head of the Civil Service of the Federation, Winifred Oyoita, who was speaking while commissioning a transmission substation in Calabar, the Cross River State Capital, said the discos must do more to ensure that Nigerians are able to tap into the benefits of the strides of the federal government in the power sector. Let's take a listen. To the glory of God and in the service of Nigeria, I hereby switch on this power transformer. Consistent with President Mamadou Buhari's policy on incremental power, Transmission Company of Nigeria has energized and commissioned into service 260 MVA transformers at Calabar substation. We are bringing developers of power, we are taking them to market men and women. So we're doing something like that now in Sabungeri. We're also doing something like that in Abia and in Lagos. And I think yesterday or two days ago, the Vice President also went to a farming uh, a farm settlement in Undu to show that these things can happen. So we're breaking up all of the old big things that made it difficult. The Federal Government of Nigeria, through the Federal Ministry of Power, would continue to support its agencies to discharge their duties under the policy of incremental power. 
the capacities of Calabar 132 by 33 kV substation prior to the commissioning was 180 MVA. The substation has been upgraded to 240 MVA. The head of service of the Federation, Winifred Oyoita, says the upgraded substation in Calabar is expected to improve the quality of power supply to Nigerians. In line with the policy of this administration on incremental power, CCN is implementing the transmission, rehabilitation and expansion program, which seeks to strengthen grid infrastructure for enhanced wheeling capacity that offers redundancy consistent with the requirements of the N1 reliability criterion. It would provide the necessary operational flexibility and as such ensures stable and reliable power delivery to the distribution companies and other class of customers connected directly to the national grid. This kind of innovation in problem solving will continue as TCN engineers will conduct several 130 kV lines through in-house capacity before the end of the year. The transmission company of Nigeria Red trades that the Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, while commissioning into service a 40 MVA mobile power transformer in Umwaya substation and a 60 MVA in Aba, says over 90 projects will be delivered to boost power capacity for distribution nationwide. I wish to use this occasion to call on the distribution companies to invest in their network so that the massive investment by TCN and the generation companies can lead to economic growth and development of Nigeria. I wish to thank the Honorable Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Mr. Babatunde Fashola San for providing the leadership that is making it possible for TCN to transform from the weakest link to the strongest link now in the power sector. We provide big transformers like this. We will collaborate with the distribution people and see what we can do to better the supply of electricity to extend. We've created redundancy, which means even if any of this CCMBA uh, power transformer develop problem, we have another one that can quickly take over the supply of uh, such a uh, transformer. The Ministry of Power, Works and Housing, through the implementation of the transmission rehabilitation and expansion programs, is expected to not only stabilize but expand the grid to 20,000 megawatts in the next two to four years. That's all on this week's edition of the program. Let's continue the conversation on social media. On Facebook, it's facebook.com forward slash infrastructure weekly and on Twitter at infra underscore weekly. Continue to support and protect all federal government infrastructure projects around you. Let's make Nigeria great by being patriotic citizens and observing our civic responsibilities by above all paying our taxes. Thanks so much for watching. I am Abosadi Omowi. Bye for now.